What is going on everybody? Bo here, back with a brand new episode of You May Neko When They Cry. Wassimon! We had started up the Answer Ox section of the You May Neko game. And uh, before we did that, we went to the Witches Party of episode 4, in which it was a conversation between Lemma Delta and Burn Castle, discussing how Beatrice didn't really fought all that much and how Badoor's blue troops were kind of longs here and there with, you know, small bombs being placed in the food and other long things he stated. But uh, at the very end, both Burncastle and Lemma Delta agreed that certainly and without a chance of a miracle, Beatrice would lose in the end. Which, you know, creates this kind of tragedy for Beatrice as both in a meta sense and, you know, in-game sense as well. As the antagonist of the story, of a specifically a murder mystery story, of course she will lose. If she's the main culprit, the main culprit is always caught in the end of murder mysteries. Or just mysteries in general. Mystery fiction. So there's no way in hell for Beatrice to win. So we move on into episode 5, in which Bador is trying to figure out what the hell it all means. As well as I, trying to figure out what the hell this all means in the end. Well, Beatrice has become as a vegetable, completely unable to do anything, completely given up on her wife, or because, well, she knows she'll lose. Then she's stuck in this hell. This never-ending game, this this eternity, forever more, you know. Well, Bad War still tries to figure out everything. Because Beatrice forfeited her game, and so does Bad War in protest, Burn Castle and Medelta decide to take control of the game board, and uh, when Medelta becomes the game master of Episode Five. But. Badur deciding that he needs more clues and with some encouragement from uh, Vigilia and Wonov, decides to become a part of this brand new game board. In which we see a brand new character, which I figured out after the episode, is pretty much Burncastle's uh, self-insert detective, <laughs> OC. <laughs> Complete with blue hair and all that, in which uh, we see her doing the old par war scene, or reveal scene in every single detective uh, murder mystery novel, you know, where the Sherlock Holmes or Hercule Piot brings everyone together into the dining room and, you know, explains everything out. But after that, we uh, flash back a couple weeks before the family conference in 1986, in which Kinzo is dead. He, he straight up dies in the end. But, you know, as soon as there, everyone is there, Nanjo, uh, Genji, Kumasawa, and Natsuhi, Kraus decides for them to wait, because Kraus being the idi idiot he is, as it turns out, Pretty much signed off on his property and the right to attorney, uh, and used Kinzo's um, many accounts as uh, uh, what was it? Collateral. That's right. In one of his many business failures, and so he pleads to Natsuhi that he just needs a year or half a year in order to make his money back. So Natsuhi comes up with the plan of pretending that Kinzo is still alive. Well, in her own mind, she comes up with this version of Beatrice and of Kinzo, who are it was magically still alive within her own head, of course. And I'm very curious on uh, what actions Beatrice will uh, take and how that, you know, will wait to Natsuhi's uh, imagination. I feel like that will be a lot of insight into her as a person. Indeed. But before we continue on, there is many comments I need to address from last episode. Um, one of them being that uh, it, it's a very sad state we see Beatrice in, you know, as a vegetable. When we've come to know her as this, you know, villainous, um, cackling witch, it very is, you know, sad to see that she is, uh, in a, um, pretty much a vegetable, you know, in a coma sort of sense. Uh, another thing is that uh, someone told me, um, same person actually, that in um, the reason why Natsuhi didn't want uh, Kinzo's body to be autopsied is because in um, many in Buddhist religion, uh, the way that the 
but if the body is like anyway like uh, deformed or anything before they're carried into the afterlife they will look like that in the afterlife as well so like let's say you you know autopsy a person they're going to look like their autopsy and you know the afterlife which makes a lot of sense but also if we take that into account why the hell would nazi then put kinzo in the furnace whose idea was that you know like they they want to come up with a whole thing of you know make kinzo disappear and they obviously got to put away the body but why burn the body if nazi is so it seems plus it seems like nazi is like in charge of the whole you know thing of hot, covering up kinzo's death so why would why would she put kinzo's body in the furnace you know, burn the damn body if he's not going to be buried properly. I mean, you could very much easily just go out into the woods of Wokenjima and bury him. You know, kind of what Ketchy did in episode 3 of uh, Higurashi <laughs> with Tepe. Um, very similar to that, actually. Anyway, that aside, uh, another thing that uh, someone asked is specifically about my uh, Maria theory. Actually, two major things from two different people. One is, uh, how was Maria able to, you know, finance the whole thing of, like, you know, the banks and all that? What I'm not, I'm not trying to imply that Maria is the main culprit in all this. She is merely the accomplice of this. She's merely the one who wrote the letters. I don't think she did finance the whole banks or whatever because you know, she's nine years old. I think the main person who's behind it, the main person that's masterminding all this, who, you know, pretty much had Maria as a accomplice in this, who pretty much just, what her, her only, Maria's only job in my theory is that she just wrote down the letters in, you know, the human aspect, in the magical sense, you know, Beatrice and all that, besides that. In my human theory, it's just Maria just writes down the letters. That's all she does. She doesn't do anything else. She just writes it due to the actions of the main culprit, who I think is the person that took on the name Kinzo in episode 4. But it also brings up a problem of who, okay, <laughs> with the information we got from last episode as well, obviously Natsui, Kraus, Nanjo, Kumasawa, Genji, they know that Kinzo is dead. They know he's dead, and they obviously want to cover it up. So that means in episode 4, with the red you know, truth that we heard from Beatrice that no one would mistake Kinzo by sight and that they knew it was Kinzo and Bad Wars Fury of someone must have inherited the title of Kinzo in order for that to make sense. That means the rest of the family would have to know that someone else took the name Kinzo. Therefore, they would have to know that Kinzo is dead. So what the hell... So who the hell is this person? First question. Second question. Then why cover up the fucking body? Why cover it up at all if you're just going to tell the family that Kinzo's dead and that someone else took on the name Kinzo? It just, it just doesn't make sense, <laughs> like at all. It, it, it really, like I, I'm trying to, I've tried to, you know, wrap my head around this for like the past couple of days in between episodes. It, it, no matter, I, I can't think of anything that would make sense as to, like, who would take on the new name of Kinzo, who I think is probably the main culprit. Who's using Maria, kind of like a parallel with Beatrice and Kinzo from the old, and this new Kinzo using Maria once again. You know, I feel like that would be a big parallel. Uh, another, um, uh, someone else brought up the thing of, Okay, if Maria, is, if Beatrice is just merely the black mage or black witch of Maria's heart, who is the physical Beatrice that Rosa, Maria, and Kyrie saw at the beginning of episode 2? Fantastic question. Um, so I looked back at that, and the only explanation is that it's someone, it's one of the 17, because there's only 17 people on the island. We know that for sure. It's been said in the Red Truth, right? There's only 17 people, so that means it has to be one of those 17 people who dressed up as Beatrice. The only person that I can think, logically, that would fit every descriptor of Beatrice, who could, you know, who's young, who is a woman, and able to, you know, 
dress up as her, and who wasn't there at the uh, parlor where the rest of the family was, wasn't at the guest house where the cousins were, is Shannon. Now, the reason why I say this is because at the beginning of episode 2, we have a big focus on Shannon and George. We have a gigantic focus. We spend like the first three chapters exploring them. And we see that Shannon has this kind of weird relationship with Beatrice, which I theorize that is most likely, you know, Shannon's interpretation or her internalized feelings of uh, her relationship with George and how it's not going to work out in the end. And if we remember correctly that uh, Beatrice, you know, gave... Uh, Shannon this uh, bracelet, this uh, rocket, if I remember correctly, that says, you know, if you do this, you will be able to have, you know, George. So I feel like the main culprit also works with Shannon in this case in episode two, in which I don't, don't ask me why, don't ask me why, for some reason, to dress up as Beatrice and to for some reason front in front of Maria and Rosa and Kyrie. The only explanation I can come up with is that this is some sort of distraction from what's actually going on in the island. That's the only thing I can come up with is why Shannon would dress up as, you know, Beatrice was by the order of the main culprit who is the new person who takes on the name Kinzo to distract everyone else to Throw in this kind of monkey lunch at everyone else while the, everyone else focuses on this new person, this 19th person, you know, Beatrice, while the main culprit does their own thing or whatever. And it's only Shannon that fits the criteria who, um, who wasn't, who wasn't seen at all during the interval because, um, I checked too. I have to say, you may Neko. I, I feel like is the series where I actually look back on my videos the most, like a hundred percent, because there there's so much shit. Anyway, because I checked back, and you know, in the scene in the par where Shannon comes in, has tea, she gets embarrassed by you know, uh, spilling uh, tea if I remember correctly, then weaves. We don't see her. Okay, we don't see her until she's back at the guest house a couple hours later. So that means that for a big chunk of time, we have no idea where the hell Shannon is. And plus, once more, she fits the description of Beatrice. Young woman able to dress up as her. Now for episode four of Beatrice, that battle we saw, it could also be Shannon once again since... Bad or didn't see Shannon's body until hours later, you know, and then she could have been killed by someone else. Um, but I'm, I'm th that one I'm a bit shaky on. I have no idea who the hell the Beatrice was in episode four that Bad or met. But I'm going to stick to that theory. The, you know, Beatrice that Maria, Rosa, Curie saw was Shannon dressed up as it to serve as a distraction from what's actually going on from the main culprit, who is the person who gains the title of Kinzo. Whoever the hell that may be, and for what fucking reason. <laughs> um, but, uh, on to the second major thing. Someone mentioned, uh, of, you know, me questioning why Angie was dead in 1988. Um, most likely reason is that no matter what, in 1988, after Ava's dead... Angie kills herself in 1998, therefore she never escaped. You know what? Actually, let me check. Let me check right now. Can I execute Angie? Let me see. Angie said, did I try this last time? I think I did. Yeah, I can't execute her. That's right. Um, yeah, I can't execute her at all. But anyway, um, in the scene where supposedly Ava comes back from hell in order to, you know, kill Angie... She says a very interesting line. In the few days we spent together, we it was wonderful. Now, Ava was with Angie for 12 years. What the fuck does this mean? <laughs> In the few days we knew each other, what what actually does that mean? 
The only explanation I can come up with, actually I have two, but the second one's way more shaky since, you know, we have multiple people that probably knew about her and spread about it since. Basically, the second one is, like, Ava, I don't know, died after, you know, meeting with uh, Angie all the way back in 1986. Um, but my first theory is that what Ava's referring to in that scene where uh, Angie's confronting her, which I interpret as Angie quite literally confronting her demons about her aunt, which is uh, how I interpret that scene at least. You know, just com like truly coming face to face with her, you know, the haunting memory of her aunt, Ava. What Ava is referring to is that for the first couple of days Angie was with Ava, Ava was nice to her perhaps, and then, quote-unquote, the black mage, aka Ava Beatrice, took over her heart and made her more cold and brutal towards Angie. I feel like that's what she's referring to in that scene of the few days we knew each other were wonderful. I feel like that's the only reason, that's the only explanation you can find that would make sense for that context. Another thing, referring to my... Uh, Ava's family killing everybody in episode 3. Of, um... Why would Ava kill both George and Hideroshi if they all work together to kill the rest of the family? And that's a great question. And actually, someone pointed to me to go back to episode 3 and execute, uh... Hideroshi, which actually... With this... I, I did this before, uh, recording. Which made me come up with a new theory. This last sentence right here. Keras, who knew she was still alive. And as soon as this was said, as soon as I read this, you know who I went to? Kyrie. And once we execute her, the stomach is in a very lethal spot. Wouldn't it have been okay to kill her by a safer method and just stick a stake in the corpse? I think what this is referring to is that once Hideroshi was confronted by both Rudolph and Kyrie in the entrance hall, he obviously attacked. He, you know, killed Rudolph, like, instantly, like, might as well just check. From now on, they will have to be finished off of stakes, apparently. Vulgar. It's very interesting. Um, so, Heidi Roshi kills Rudolph first, then he fatally wounds Kyrie, stabs her in the stomach with this stake. And so, because of this, Heidi Roshi became, you know, a little fine. He, he waxed a little. And in the split second, he gets stabbed in the stomach by another stake that Kyrie grabbed somehow. I, I don't know. I, I don't fucking know. But I feel like what this is implying is that Kyrie did indeed murder Heidi Roshi after she was supposedly killed by him. So we can scratch off the whole my theory about uh, the reason why George went to the uh, mansion in order to get Heidi Roshi, and more likely Ava just killed uh, Natsu and Kraus by herself, by you know sneaking up behind them. So so the thing is, okay, if Heidi Roshi is murdered by Kyrie, he never gets back up. That makes sense. Who kills George then? If in my theory George is the one that killed Nanjo, which let me just check. One last push, and he would have probably been home for you. But at the last possible moment, she did not per permit him that. I feel like the she in this sentence is just there to fuck with you. <laughs> like I feel like it's just. I I really do feel like that's just. I think it's just referring to Ava Beatrice, which is probably what you what the game wants you to think. I think it's just fucking with us with that sentence. I'm still going to go with that George murdered Nanjo there. So the question is. Who killed George, then? You know, obviously George dies eventually because once we get to Ava Beatrice, she states in red that George dies. And I have no idea. I don't know. Um, the only people left alive, Jessica was blind. Uh, Ava was still alive. Yeah, Battleware was chasing Ava. So no way she was able to kill George. It would have to be another person. But who the fuck would that be out of the 17 people on the island? And unfortunately, Kinzo's knocked off the list as well. 
fuck, who was still alive? Not, no. It was Jessica, Ava, Battler. Those were the only three left. Maybe he died by an accident. How, how did he die? Gunner spear shaped object. Corpse discovered the main. The murder weapon is assumed to be a gunner spear shaped object. I don't know, he swept in blood and fell. <laughs> it was an accident. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That, that, fuck. <laughs> I have to say... I have to say... F the deeper we get into this game, the more and more it just becomes... It drives you insane. I swear to God, it does. And I think one of the big aspects of that is that in every episode, new characters are added. Every single episode, there's a new character. At least one. Or even multiple. I mean, look at fucking episode 4 and fucking Angie's side. Like, oh my god. And I feel like it's very much intentional on Ryu Kushio 7's part to add in these many characters. Because in I mean, in Higurashi, there weren't as many characters. Like, the, uh... People, like, characters you meet in episode 1, that's like... At least 70% of the cast, you know, right away. But in Yume Neko, the reason why there are so many fucking characters is that it just, it's there to fuck with you. It really is there to just fuck with you over and over again. Of like, every episode you go through, another character, another character, another character. Yeah, I kind of love it. <laughs> I'm not saying it's a bad thing or anything, it's just... It just makes it so much more fucking complicated because you don't, you can't just add it. Could you imagine in a Sherlock Holmes like novel, like every single chapter a new fucking character is added? Like it would be insane. It would absolutely be insane. So I think I've addressed all the comments. I think uh, <laughs> because God, I, I'm sorry if I didn't get to your comment or respond to you, like a particular one because there's just so much on my mind and you may not go <laughs> by this point. But uh, the uh, one commentary mentioned that I didn't check the tips, which I guess I didn't for episode four. So let me check those out real quick. What the hell is this? Marisha Ware, a witch's alliance for my Lady Maria, which Lady Beatrice and was which two of them created a groundbreaking new system of magic, thereby granting Beatrice, whose magic powerful had begun to grind, immense new power. Okay. You could probably say that it was through the formation of this alliance that Beatrice gained the endless power in the true sense. Article 1 requires members to accept each other as witches and respect each other's magic. At one point, young Angie was invited into the alliance, but was she was with her excommunicated. Okay, system of magic. Oh shit, this is, wow, this is actually really important. A foundation upon which it occurred magic. In particular, it refers to a system by whose shared use, usage magic power can be gained without conscious effort. You could say that writing down their own system of magic and weaving it to future generations is one of a witch's wife's works. However, systems of terrific, terrific magical power are correspondingly difficult to comprehend, and shared usage of them is troublesome. As a result, none will appear to bear the burden. If a system's magical power is simple, there will likely be no difficulty sharing it, but as a result, the system will be reduced to having no greater effect than a simple good luck charm, and would ultimately be forgotten. Weaving a system of magic for later generations while simultaneously maintaining that balance is the true joy of witchcraft. Okay. Grimoire. In short, a grimoire is that into the witch's system of magic is run down and transmitted to radio generations. The most famous grimoire in the world today has a 2,000 year history and is still in circulation, and is said to be continuing to acquire new alliance members even now. It's forbidden to speak of the true name of that grimoire, and it is simply called the Book. Hmm, interesting. Maybe referring to the Bible? Hmm. <laughs> Beatrice Tyrells. As a witch, Beatrice holds the two titles of Endless and Golden, because there are originally titles from separate- because these are originally titles from separate systems of magic. It can be said that she possesses two systems. Oh my god, are we implying that there's multiple magic systems? Oh, fuck. Oh, shit, man. Oh, Christ. Okay. 
The Endless Witch has its foundations in endless creation and is the root of her unmatched endless magical power. The Golden Witch has its foundation in magic realization and her magical power is to make the previous metals of fantasy manifest in reality gives the miracle of manifestations to all faint forms of magic. Oh. Magic realization. Metals of fantasy manifest in reality. Interesting. The two of these were polished even further from Marie Sorer, elevating them to a system of magic called Endless Realization. In that sense, she should now be called neither the Endless nor the Golden Witch, but by a new title that is a fusion of the two. Okay. Okay. So, gold. So, the Golden Witch, Magic Realization. So, different, like, powers, different techniques, I guess you could say. Metals of Fantasy Manifest in Reality. Okay. Regarding witches, the definition of a witch is vague, but the most accepted theory is that one is a witch at the point when they gain a power surpassing humans and are able to use it freely. In the world, or possibly fragment, in which they can be freely used is called their territory. Most witches cannot leave their territory, but those who are capable of transcending its boundary at will and wandering the fragments are called warriors. In this story, Ben Castle and Avadelta fall under this type. Okay. Okay, so, okay. So their territory is like the world they can control. Regarding voyagers, worlds of different fates and circumstances are called fragments, yes, and witches who are able to cross the ocean of endless fragments are called warriors. It is also another name for a high order, high level witch, and witches who are unable to weave their territories cannot compare with their power. However, perhaps because they do not have specific territories, their personal values are unstable, and it is easy for their souls to become faint. As a result, it is not rare for warriors to disappear like scraps of seaweed in the ocean of fragments. Hmm. Their voyage has no end point, and perhaps you could even say that it is a journey to escape an end point. Witches of a higher order than warriors are called creators. What the fuck are creators? Creators are sacred beings who can create one out of the sea of nothingness. They can give birth to one from zero, give birth to the endless, and then return it to zero again in a flash. They are freed from all restrictions, and the warriors sometimes even call them gods. In that sense, perhaps the Witch of Origins, Maria, who is promised to become a creator, may be called her chosen one. Warriors fear that the end of their own journey is to become a creator, as to why they would be fond of evolving into a higher order, order being, none can understand except they themselves. Huh. That is... That is fucking interesting. <laughs> okay. So we'll uh, obviously getting deeper into the whole thing. So system of magic. This this is the very interesting one. Shared usage of them is troublesome. Okay. Okay. So you're only able to share like systems, like simple spells. If you put too much like um too much power in one system. It will not, you know, be good. So that's interesting. A part of a witch's, like, thing is to share their magical power. That's very interesting. Thank you so much for uh, the commenter that left to uh, let me know to check on that. Because it actually, that's actually very interesting. Of, um... Creators and... So, voyeurs and creators, huh? <laughs> Once again, adding more to that kind of uh, meta aspect to Emma Delta and uh, Burn Castle. Of, uh, you know, them being like kind of like uh, Emma Delta being like the creator. Well, I guess in this aspect, they would both be viewers then. One's more chaotic and one's more cold and calculated. With, you know, Rama Delta being chaotic and Burn Castle being, you know, cold and calculated viewers. And we obviously have creators who are higher than warriors. Which, it's very interesting. It's very interesting. I think, I think I've addressed everything I want in my head. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure. So let's actually 
Get back into the fucking game. God damn it, did I almost spend another 30 minutes on the intro? <laughs> um, oh, god damn it. I, oh, okay. Okay, th there was also one other thing in that uh, in episode 4, I executed Bad War. And his description said that uh, his body was uh, driven to hell, aka the Golden Wind, which to her, aka Beatrice, is a hell unto itself. Which, once again, implies that Beatrice is trapped in the cage known as this game board. <sighs> and I think that's everything. I'm pretty sure that's everything. What's actually skin to the fucking game? The Rose Garden was truly splendid this year. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm spending like 30 minutes on these goddamn intros. Oh my god, but there's just so much to this game. There's so much. There's so much shit, man. <laughs> <sighs> the roses were blooming like crazy as if competing with each other. That was Garden, Kinzo, Cannon, that's how you could be seen. Wow, you're actually out of side your study. Good good job, Kinzo. ありがとうございます。今日という日でさえなかったならバラを愛でながら紅茶を楽しむこともできただろうに。Hmm. shrugged. Today was the family conference. When it came to the other siblings' businesses, none of the news had been good. On the contrary, the siblings probably planned to turn the conversation to the top of Kinzo's remaining wife. And hold a quiet feud over the inheritance. ただ。計画の規模がだいぶ大きいようで、なかなか思い通りに結実しないようです。可能ならば今日の親族会議を迎える前に何とかしたかったものだな。はい。申し訳ございません。良いのか、金蔵。そんなところをのんびり散歩しておって。Please don't have the other outfit on. I swear to God, if she has the other outfit on, this is just gonna make everything so much more fucking complicated. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> How had she gotten up there? Well, it's fairly pointless to wonder about that sort of thing when you're dealing with a witch. Beatrice was casually sitting on the roof of the arbor, almost as though she had been basking in the sun. Okay, so this is Kinzo's interpretation of Beatrice, different from Natsui's interpretation of Beatrice from the beginning of this episode. Oh, God. Hatsiawasinatara. <laughs> <laughs> そういうわけにはまいりません。どうかお城に明けるためにもうしばらくお力をお貸しください。夏日、親族どもの乗った船がこちらへ向かったようだぞ。そろそろ散歩は終わりにした方が良かろうな。そうですか。ありがとう。
No, it did say- no. It did say, in the, la the, the last moments of last episode, it did say it, it flashed back to a year earlier, back to 1985, right? Yeah, it did. It fucking did. Also, someone did uh, in the comments, uh, some sort of point out something that I missed, <laughs> which is very funny. That's uh, Burning Castle. The Witch of Miracles, also known as the Witch Who Knows That Miracles Don't Occur. Very much of oxymoron. <laughs> Can't believe I missed that last time. <laughs>彼らの前で名乗ることはできませんが、主人はすでに後ろに焼け投手。私もその妻として恥ずかしくないよ。微力を尽くします。朝から伊豆を起こしているクラウスに比べ、夏日はなんと落ち着いたことか。あが息子が
wait. It did say 1985. I know for a fact it said it. It, it said 1985, like a year ago. So does that mean Kinzo's been dead for a year? Let me check something. I just checked last episode. It literally just says the family conference of last year, October 5th, 1985, which is most likely where we are right now. That's the setting of this episode. So that means by the time 1986 comes around, aka the setting for episodes 1 through 4, Kinzo has been dead for a year. Well, shit. Okay. Okay. Alright. Alright. そなたには魔女の才能があるかもしれぬが、ハンマホの毒素をためにためて年を重ねたが、それでもなおそなたは魔法を理解した。うん。わらわとの出会いが幼少の頃であったなら、そなたは今頃偉大なる魔女だったか
Someone taking on the title of Kinzo. ちょっと待って。ちょっと待って。ちょっと待って。ちょっと待って。ちょっと待って。ちょっと待って。ちょっと待って。ちょっと待って。ちょっと待って。ちょっと待って。ちょっと待って。ちょっと待って。ちょっ
of someone else to take up the title of Kenzo. For what reason, we do not know. So he, that Kenzo, quote unquote, could appear in episode 4. I wonder. Maybe in the 1986 family conference, we actually have no idea about. Maybe because. Okay, because, okay, in 1988, Ava's the only one to come back. And she doesn't tell much. No, 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 no. The, okay, it's like a Shorinator's box, right? The only thing, the only thing the outside world has is two message bottles, which say different things about the family conference. But the basis of the family conference for 1986, at least to the world, is that the family is going there to discuss the inheritance. What if that is a false foundation? That, that is completely false. That wasn't what the 1986 family conference was about. It's actually in the 1985 conference that the family inheritance is discussed. While in the 1986 one, something else is completely discussed between the family, which allows this new head, this new Kinzo, to be able to appear because the family already knows that Kinzo is dead because they already discussed that in 1985. Okay. Okay, all right. Now this, okay. All right. Ooh, okay. We're getting somewhere. <laughs> so then that creates a question. Whoever wrote down the letters, which is most likely Maria, why would they write it down for the basis of the family Conference to discuss the fair inheritance, even though the family inheritance was always discussed in 1985, most likely. <sighs> okay. Okay. Seem though he's alive, creating an illusion of him, can share that illusion. Okay. Yes. In the games before now, Grandfather has always locked himself up in his study. We never met him directly. Whoa! <laughs> However, some people said things that made us think he was locked up in his study in a bad mood, such as claiming to have met him only a short while ago. We blindly accepted their statements and believed that Grandfather was in the study. That's why it was possible for an illusion of Grandfather to exist in the study. Which represents all the scenes we've seen of him. That's right, in the games before now, the only people who met Grandfather were Uncle Klaus, Aunt Natsuki, and the servants. Yep, and the servants. Because they all stuck to the same story. An illusion of Grandfather was able to exist on this island making it seem like he was alive. I mean, yeah. I mean, she did say, what, what were you talking about, honey? Kinzo's still alive. And then he got up and was alive. <laughs> yeah, alright. <laughs> みちの薬物プルプルピコプヨとか期待してたのに。そんな盲言口にするわけもないでしょ。だってその存在を仮定することはファンタジーに屈したのと全く同じだもの。うん。ウイルスだろうと薬物だろうと病気だろうと未知の
whatever, with, you know, the Seven Sisters having different biblical demon names. Yet the Chestfire Sisters only have numbers collaborating with them. Which is very interesting, which is a thing I'd never thought about, obviously. Uh, but it is very interesting that the Chestfire Sisters isn't really, can, like, in any way religious or, you know, demonic about them. They seem like just military bunnies, which... Which is something interesting to think about, like, even though they're, like, referred to as, uh, you know, higher position than the Seven Sisters, obviously. So, just an interesting thing to point out. Maybe it'll come back, it'll probably come back, but, you know, it's... なんかいな科学装置の使用を禁ず殺人に<笑> みちのやくぶつ。みちのびょうき。みちのエクスを家庭なんて立派なファンタジーなわけ。ご収集さん。それがあなたの推理だったなら、あなたゲームオーバーよ。ナウ、ナウ <laughs> 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 <Now, now> we're <laughs> Oh my god, trying to, you know, explain the proper genre now <laughs> of this fucking game. Uh. <laughs> Fantasy versus anti fantasy. I mean, I, I mean, yeah. Daga, he tots the Kawa Karakotoga. Ore no Korema de Notakatani, Ketio Tsketaira she私たちは魔女幻想という<笑> ただいま、これまでのゲームで何度もミスト殺人があったでしょ。いや。赤き真実を織り交ぜてガキンガキンと派手にあれ私に言わせると時間の無駄だってノックス第三条で明記されてるんだもの秘密の通路の存在は禁ずミステリーではね秘密の通路はあっちゃいけないの I think I think someone mentioned this as like very early on in uh, this let's play of Noxus Fangs, and I think I did read through it, but um, I can't remember all of them since it's been a fucking long time. つまり、正式なミステリーとして解釈しようとする場合、隠し扉があるのかどうかなんて論争を始めからしたら負けなのよ。だって、ないんだから。存在するかもしれないと疑う時点で。<sighs> 
もうゲームオーバーつまり犯行現場に隠し扉が存在しないことが証明されてないから推理できないなんて余ったれたあなたはミステリー失格その時点でゲームオーバーミステリーで解釈する戦いをしてるつもりだったんでしょああならミステリーのお約束にちゃんと従わなきゃ Fuck you <笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑>そういうことよ。すべての犯行現場には隠し扉が存在してはならないの。だからその存在を確かめる行為はすべて時間の無駄ってわけ。お前が言ってるのはあれだろどこかで聞いたな。推理小説の条件十箇条みたいなやつだった。ええ、そうよ。機代の魔女狩り大司教ノックスが振りかざす。魔女をうがつ十本のくさびよ。<笑>それこそが魔女幻想というファンタジーと。魔女面から戦い、打ち破るための正しい武器。さすがベルね。厄介な武器を持ち込むこと。ファンタジーの大敵だわ犯行現場を調べもせずに隠し扉の存在を初めから否定できるなんて I mean, bad way, we gotta follow conventions, obviously <笑>俺にはそれこそファンタジーだぞ<笑>魔女側を受け持つラムダはファンタジーそれと戦う私はミステリーあなたはただファンタジーを否定してかわし続けるのがやっとのアンチファンタジー何から何まで反対だけど大案は一つも出せないあなたどっかの国の政治家みたいねナイスポルコカムテリベンガーソウルセズお前たちとわけのわからねえ話をするためにここに戻ってきたんじゃねえ。Man, I don't give a shit about the genre. I don't care about the damn truth. How about that? さっさと話を続けろ。静かになさいよ。あんたの後ろの眠り姫が辛そうよ。When he turned around, he saw Beto's whipping corpse resting on a chair. Never sweat glistened all over her body and felt like she was breathing a little harder than normal. She looked as though she was suffering from a high fever. Beato! Dosana! Taijoka! Taijoka! Kate! Anta, o k a s i n a k o t o you know, eh? Sonoko, Koros Tamini, Anta, or Tanaka, t e r u n i s h o g a で第5のゲームを改装しているけれどゲームは今ベルンがかなり追い込んでいて魔女幻想を打ち破ろうとしているのその存在が否定されかかってるんだもの苦しむのは当然だわあなただって今金蔵が存在するわけがないと魔女幻想を打ち破ったわあなたの攻撃はベアトに通った証拠<laughs> I tried to at least wipe away the sweat on Beto's forehead with a handkerchief. It's true, I promised Beto that I'd let her die, but it was supposed to happen peacefully. I wasn't planning to make her suffer first. My goal isn't to make the sweeping Beto suffer like this before killing her. As if they have seen white fruit to my mixed feelings. The two which is great. <sighs> God. <sighs> fucking burn castle. Fucking. It's been anti fantasy versus fantasy, which. <laughs> Which makes, yeah, that does make sense. That, yeah. Because 
bad where his whole thing has been. <laughs> it really, because, it, it, oh, this fucking game. It, it really goes back and you're like, well, it's fucking isn't it's supposed to be mystery versus fantasy. Well, yeah, that's because we've been working in the fucking confines of this weird mystery fantasy fight between these two genres. <laughs> working in it. Uh, God, but what? Uh, God. また、私のせいじゃないわよ。どうしようもないでしょ。たまたま廊下にいて聞かれてたなんて事故でしょ、事故。予算か、二人とも。今回は運が悪かったと思って諦めるんや。男の機嫌なんてほっとけばコロッと
<笑>そうですねこの話はこれまでとします各自通常のお勤めに戻るようにそうそう郷田に特別にお茶の用意をさせましたいただくようにナッシー let them know that she wanted to be left alone for a while so she could drink some black tea in the rose garden the black tea that had been carried all the way to the bench was the Sir Wycombe tea at Dimboella that she had promised Beto along with some par patis oh now I give the comment that Beatrice made of um uh, am I, if I'm able to trick them all the way through the family conference where I have that tea, probably referring to Natsuri herself. Sitting on either side of the sn snack, staring at it curiously, the wife of the head and her witch could be seen. Apparently, Natsuri, not realizing I had a curry like spicy flavor, it's sort of choking up to put it in her mouth. To describe it in the Japanese terms, it was like fight dumping, dumpling stuff with mashed curly flavored potatoes. As a household dish, it would probably be pretty popular with the kids. However, it was something of a shock to Natsu. We expected that a treat to go with tea would be sweet. Hmm, some cookies. Chugokchanarashoronpo.Wara,我给别人好きだ。驚きました。随分と文化に詳しいのですね。まあ、だて2000年は生きておらぬ。世界の名茶は人通りためした。お茶の世界旅行といったところか。確かに。Well, it's a lot of better than burn castles alcohol problems, huh? <laughs>この世の紅茶の楽しみ方もあると今日初めて知りましたのでこれは貴重な体験ですわらわはロッケン島より出られないこれくらいしか旅をすることはできぬでなそなたはどうか不合の妻らしく世界を優雅に旅してきたのであろうがジェシカが生まれる前は主人はいろいろな国に私を連れて行ってくれました嫁ぐまでは一度も海外旅行をしたことがなかったのでどれも神聖な体験でしたよそなたも窮屈な家に
いいかこれは貧乏というここでは庶民的な嗜好品だ It looks like a small, round, gourd white nut that had been smashed with a cucumber wedge in it. At a glance, it looked as though it would probably taste like pickles. As she tried to bite the one her husband was holding, he suddenly moved it away. It felt kind of embarrassing like she was a fish after some bait. しかし食べてはならないのですかうん食べて噛むそして Wow, all CJ papers? Even her favorite handkerchief, which she had wiped across his mouth with, had bright red marks on it. It's not that poisonous if eaten or drunk and mixing the inside of your mouth so bright red, and having to spit something out after you put it in your mouth. How indecent. Thinking this, Natsu Natsu I'm will refuse Cross's invitation. Cross kept chewing, ignoring the fact that even his lips were being covered in bird bread. <laughs> During travel, Cross had the innocence of a child. He didn't even conceal his jealousy of the respect Natsu normally gave Kinzo. Just being able to see that side of her husband made traveling all the way to another country worthwhile. Cross urged her even harder to bite it. But Natsu undaunted ran from place to place and finally yelled that he was being too pushy. Cross was miffed the whole bus ride. <laughs> what a child to let a little thing like that this get him down. Not so he thought ex expat <clears throat> express bleh, that is a word. Exat expressive Then a native tour guy in the bus took out one of those Eric uh, nuts and started explaining about it. It had apparently been a beloved luxury item in these parts since ancient times, similar to tobacco. Just so in Natsu's case, it was starting to be disliked by young people and was becoming obsolete. Furthermore, Shrita is a good luck charm in this area. It was known as a symbol for couples. Aw. She looked at her husband's face. He turned away abruptly, but it looked like his cheeks had gone a little red. Aw. Aw. <laughs> <laughs> Red face and avoiding Bito's eye, not to try to hide her embarrassment by swallowing the pad as whole. Chewing her if her cheeks puffed out like a blowfish. Bito said, Yup, this is the best snack anyone could have with tea. <laughs> It nodded several times, a blood smile on her face. Aw, that was a good scene, I like that. I don't know what you're saying, I don't know what you're 
カゴの鳥はわらわも同じだあなたのことは知りませんし詮索もしませんしかし軽んじでぬ境遇であったことは察しますローナヌシを気取るつもりもないわ同じカゴの鳥同士せいぜい仲良くしようぞわらわはそなたを気に入ったぞそうですかありがとうこの度の親族会議における使用人たちへの指示や采配は見事であった金蔵が何時にどこにいて何をして何を残したかそれらを見事に共有させ矛盾なく組み上げたそれらの緻密な計画書は高度な魔法人のそれと同じ美しさがあったぞ To make it look like Kinzo actually existed and was living life his own way, she had written his schedule for the date down to the finest detail and made the servants follow it to the letter. But he, when did he meet whom and where, and what did he meet with them? What did he do, what went and where, and what changed? As a result, even though the relatives never saw Kinzo even once, they hadn't suspected in the slightest that he hadn't been there. Ava and the rest truly believed that Kenzo had just happened to be walking through the hall when he heard them talk about the inheritance and went into a rage. Everything had gone just as Natsui's plan had predicted, down to the finest detail. And cooperation by the servants had also worked smoothly, down to the finest detail. Obviously, they've in the year after this, they probably devolved the plan into you know, kids will just walked up in his room, you know. <laughs> huh. Huh. Oh boy, here we go. Watching these two have their present shot was another pail of steam rising from their black tea. However, the second pair was in a world that the first couldn't see where golden roses bloomed. Ronome got Kyo Kikasete. Onaji, Dim Bratoka, you caught how you let a great as a. I've never really had tea. Felt as though Beto muttered something. For the first time, it felt as though something had gone through to her. Surely, she had taken an interest in the black tea and felt like drinking it. Thinking this, Beto took Beto's cup in her hand, making her hold the cup. <laughs> Beto's eyes trembled sadly, and her fingers shook. Almost as though she couldn't even move her fingers as she wanted to. And was mourning the fact that she could no longer enjoy the tea she had once loved by her own power. That's how she looked. So Beto would put his hand in Beto's, grabbed hold of the teacup, lifted it to her lips. Then, that was only a single mouthful. Beto sipped. The days they had been walked in a killing fest with lead swords and blue wedges already seemed like the distant past. Now, not only was Beto unable to do that, it was even difficult for her to make her body do as she pleased. Even just drinking a mouthful of black tea like this was hard. <laughs> Kuchini Oga 
And of course, Bita didn't respond. どうしちまったんだ。お前、これもまた作戦なんだろ。落ち込んでるふりをして、後でバーッと驚かそうって作戦なんだろ。それが狙いなら、もう二度と同じ手には乗らねえから、いい加減にしろ。お前がそんな
Even though she wants to be dead. So only one with a checkmate. So the only way this game can end now is if I win. At the very least, until I do win, the Switch called Lemma Delta can probably try to buy time for Bito to make a comeback. But that'll just prolong Bito's suffering even more, exactly. Neither of us want that. Both Bito and I fought with all we had trying to win. The game repeated several times because we were both giving it everything we could muster. Then that one time, we confronted each other head on with all of our strength. And Bito acknowledged her loss. She said she wanted me to end this game and entrusted everything to me. So Burncastle's words are the truth. She said it's my fault Bito has become a living corpse. That's true. But it's something both of us wanted. Now that the game's been resolved, wouldn't it continue any further remains endless torture for Vito. Nothing more than a nightmare. They've got to give her a perfect checkpoint, end this game in the truest sense, and let her rest in peace. For that reason, I'll keep fighting. But by continuing the game, Bito's eternal torture will continue. It felt as though I could only let her sleep peacefully by slowly strangling her to death. If only Rama Delta and place the curse of that shock on her, this battle would be over already. That's why I found it detestable. This game, which I can't finish without tormenting Bito more, is detestable. Oh, shut up, Rude Castle. That's right. I have to return for Angie's sake as well. I know this isn't the time to start feeling compassion for Vito. Even though Bito was right there, Burncastle spoke without holding back. あなたは前回のゲームでベアトに壊れて口にしたのお前を殺すってねああそうかもなだがそれはお前にとやかく言われることじゃねえな知ってる爪を剥ぐ時はね一気に剥いでくれた方がマシなのよ。Great example, Brancaso. あなたみたいに優しくおっかなびっくりとぐりぐりもたもたと剥がれる方がよっぽどいたいあなたのしてることの方がよっぽど拷問だと思うけど慈悲があるなら一気に殺しなさい<笑> 
それが殺すということに余計なお世話だ俺がこいつにどう引導を渡すか俺が決めることだ Damn right. お前もあのラムダデルタという魔女も関係ない俺が殺す他の誰にもそれは許さない Yeah, this is Battle and Beatrice's fight. So, no issue, you can't get it. What does she want to do? I don't know. 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 I am pretty much trapped with this. <laughs>、uh, I'll never be Luis when they cry. <laughs> Christ, two years I've been playing this. <laughs> この世界を永遠に安定させることよそんなの嫌でしょ私も困るなお前の都合など知ったことかだが俺はゲームを捨てないベアトとの戦いの責任を放棄しない<笑>目的が同じで嬉しいわそしてそれは躊躇なくその子を殺せるということよ I have no way of knowing whether those words eased her pain or hurt her. But I can tell by the dull tingling in my chest that I surely believe I've hurt her. I have no way of knowing what the sound when Beto feels. Think I've hurt her. Does that mean she's actually been hurt? And if I didn't think I'd hurt her, would that mean no one's gotten hurt because of me? Who knows? であそこで夏つひとお茶を飲んでるベアトだけど大丈夫よねああうんうん大丈夫だ金蔵の時と同じよベアトリーチェなんて存在しない yeah, yeah. あれは魔女の力を借りて危機を乗り越える妙案を思いついたと信じる夏つひが生み出した偽りの魔女幻想 Don't worry. Don't worry. I got that, geez. ふたりがならんでお茶を飲んでるように見えるのはゲームマスターであり物語の語り手であるラムダデルタが総解釈しているからなだけよ。もう一回のストーリーは。夏日に対し一片の愛も持たずに行使できたなら、そんな幻想が
夏日おばさんが本当にベアトリーチェと名乗る女とお茶を飲んだと主張することもできるんだぜ俺にお前の説を否定できないようにお前だって俺の説を否定できないんだだからそこにいるベアトが幻想だと断じることもできないぜああ猫バコリーノそれベアトには通用したかもしれないけど私には通じないのどうしてだって夏日はそこで一人ぼっちで紅茶を飲んでるんだものおはははははははははははははははははははははははははははははははははははははははははははははははははははははははははははははははははははははははははははははははははははははははははははははははははははははは And just like that, it's gone. Because once you know the truth about something, you view it in different ways. That's, that's one of the appeals of rereading mystery novels. is to go back through the novel with newfound knowledge and see the truth. <sighs> Damn. And when we went blue, the one person who remained on the bench drinking tea with a tired expression was Aunt Natsuhi, all by herself. <sighs> Bito groaned. I could see clearly that she was in anguish. Another illusion of the witch had been smashed, drawing Bito towards death. I'm sure this is what the battle to wipe Bito West in peace is all about. A second ago, Burn Castle likened her fight to the torture of tearing fingernails out. Do I have to tear them out anyway? Then my last bit of compassion towards Bito should be to minimize that pain. Yeah, let her shoot her in the head, let her then go bit by bit. In other words, even if I want to minimize her pain, I still have to cause it. I have to accept the look of anguish on her face. And at the same time, they realize what a merciless thing the red truth was. Right now in this rose garden, there's no one except non Natsuhi. In other words, there are no observers except for non Natsuhi. So if that one observer were to say that she had tea with Bito, no one should be able to refute that. If there's someone, something no one can deny, doesn't that mean it's truth? On that he's enjoying the roses and drinking tea together with Bito. How could anyone have the right to mercilessly trample that pleasant moment? <sighs>時に水利を切られ時に反撃の武器となる刃物だ知ってるわよそれが何二台に使うな刃物は使うべき時に使えば道具だ悪意を持って使えば狂気でしかない True enough, Aunt Natsuhi wasn't really drinking tea with her witch. However, seeing that with the Red Truth probably has nothing to do with our game. Yeah. Our game is a tale of October 1986. The two days of the crime give us more than enough time to injure each other with our Red and Blue Blades Gwistle thing. This is not a privacy of Natsuhi. It's not a privacy of Natsuhi. この場に魔女が実在して夏日とお茶を飲んだと認めてほしいのあなた魔女を否定するんじゃなかったの1986年10月4日から5日の2日間のゲームについてはなだがそのゲーム版の外についてまで
俺は魔女の存在を問うつもりはねえぜ<笑>そもそも悪魔の証明により魔女の否定は不可能だいやそしてこのゲームのルールに従い赤でそれを語るのもステイルメイトで禁じてだ赤き真実でさえ魔女の存在を否定はできねえんだぜ確かにまさかあなたに魔女の存在を語られるとはねさすがラムダバトラーを人間犯人説と魔女がいてもいいという気持ちのうまいこと中間に引っ張り出してきたわ<笑>人間の心を操るのに本当に長けている私ももっとあなたを応援しないとまずいわねお前らなど知ったことじゃない消えろこれは俺とベアとのゲームだお前たちに私はしない嫌よ何だって私もこのゲーム楽しんでるんだもの<笑><笑>ブーンカスルは消えた。ブーンカスルは消えた。ブーンカスルは消えた。ブーンカスルは消えた。ブーンカスルは消えた。ブーンカスルは消えた。ブーンカスルは消えた。ブーンカスルは消えた。ブーンカスルは消えた。ワルギリアはお前の友人と言ってたがお前友人は選ぶべきだったな<笑> I wouldn't say friends more like、uh, bosses or captors いやむしろ昭和なお前にはお似合いなのかな<sighs> ビートルダンアンサー Battler took Bito's hand, made her hold the cup again, blotted to her lips. Bito made a quiet sound in her throat and drank another gulp. God. Then Natsui's one way tea time ended. That truth, which was Natsui's alone and observed by no one else, had been defiled. And Natsui's world, surely. That tea party, which had been peaceful despite her annoyance at Bito for making fun of her too much, came to an end, and two of them parted ways. However, in Natsui's exposed truth, she was all alone. Natsui tottered away, and the bench only a single person's cup remained. God. That is. <sighs> Man. It will, it, it, it is,、uh, you know. God, it is. Walk、uh, to a barrier. Oh boy. It is, um. It, it, it really is, um. It's something, isn't it? It, it just. Seeing Beatrice just, just. Unable to do anything while we have, you know, Lemon Delta and Burn Castle taking over the game and. Burn Castle obviously being, you know, heartless, no soul within her, only caring about the truth. Only caring about the highs and lows of the story. You know, the story beats themselves, not about the characters.、Um, is a guess the proper way to put it. In slashing way, Nazi's peaceful time with Beatrice. Reality is just a lonely woman sitting by herself. <laughs> I mean, hell, you could also say that about me, you know? In my own little world, I'm talking to hundreds of people, but I'm just a guy in my room talking to a mic and reading a visual novel. <laughs>、uh, <laughs> isn't that something? But, um,. It's an interesting spot. You know, Bad Word trying to protect Beatrice, or really not protect her, but like end her suffering as quickly as possible. You know, not prolong it, not deny it, just do it quickly. 
you know, not tear out her fingernails, you know. It's, it, it's just, it's sad. It's sad. After dashing to her bedroom, Jessica answered the phone call that had been transferred there. Ah, oh, お、<笑><笑> So it's 86 now. Five businessmen in expensive suits are visiting, visiting the parlor, giving Krauss and Nazi a progress report on their business. Spread out on the table were the blueprints and designs for a building, as well as documents related to expenditures and the like. So packed that even a teacup would have gone in the way. Officially, they were here to give Klaus a progress report, but in actuality, Klaus had called them all the way to Okajima so that Nazi could hear from them directly. This was because Nazi needed to hear someone other than her husband explain what condition their business was in. Fair enough. <laughs> in other words, even though another family conference with Akinza was approaching, their business had not yet earned them any money. Jeez. After telling the guests to wait for a short while, Klaus took Nazi out into the hall and once again summarized the situation. つまり、我々の想像をはるかに超えて、人間は素晴らしくうまくいっているとは彼らは言っているのだ。ここで私と知事との私的なコネクションが大きく聞いてきた。もはや絶対に釣り落とすことはない。それどころか、例の委任状だ
Meanwhile, the ghost of Kinzo. <laughs> ということはどうやら私はもうしばらくここで幽霊を続けねばならぬようだな。まんざらでもなかろうが、そなたの命など、このようされば済むに悪魔どもに食いつくされる運命を申し訳ありません、お父様。またことしも、お父様にはお休み
ええ、昨年はうまくやり過ごせたつもりですが、不審に思う親族も現れるでしょう。今年は正念場になると思います。去年の親族会議の時、ひょっとしたらもう一度同じことになるかもしれぬと予見したそなたは、正しかったな。最悪のケースを想定するのは、魔女ならずとも世渡りの基本だそれで今年はどうする去年同様会議当日はお父様の秘密を知る使用人を集中的に配置しますうんお父様の不在を蹴取る親族もすでにいるかもしれません不用意な演出はむしろ馬脚を表す危険性もありますうん次たるは及ばざるがごとしとも。OK。So I just spotted this down. If Kinzo's been dead for a year, that means they haven't put their, the Kinzo's body in the furnace. You know, until very recently. Because every time we see Kinzo's body, it's burnt to shit, but it isn't a skeleton. If you put a body in a furnace, I'm, I'm pretty sure over a year that passes, I'm pretty sure even the bones would melt by that point. But it still wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't have any skin or muscles. So that means burning Kinzo's body within the furnace is a much recent thing. So それがよかろうな。老城は単純にして最後の切り札だ。どれほど屋敷が毒素に道をとも、この部屋を見つけ会に閉ざす限り、金蔵の存在を否定することはできん。The それでも何卒もう一度だけお父様とベアトリーチェの力をお貸しください私は新しき当主の命令には逆らえぬそして幽霊もまた聖者の命令には逆らえぬしなこの部屋から出るなというのであればそれに従おうありがとうございますわらわは嫌だぞ。力を貸せと願われても、願いごときでは聞いてやれぬ。ええ、あなたは顧問錬金術師。ですから、貸せと願いません。貸しなさいと命じます。あなたの魔法だけが頼りです。その力でもう一度だけ、お父様の幻想を。<笑>ならばよし、心得たぞ。<laughs> From the shadows of the study, Baudoir watched the exchange between these three. Naruhodona. So stay. Kotoshino Shinzo Kayo Mukairo Wakada. Jisama of Kien Dakarato Shosaini Toshkomori. Dare no mine was Sugata or Arawasanai. Natsuri spoke boldly about how she would somehow overcome this year's crisis and protect the Ushua Mira family's honor until the end. While Kinzo praised her, saying that her plan looked promising, Bitsuo also praised her, saying that Natsuri's dignified confidence was even more well suited for the headship than Krauss's. However, right now, the true number of people in this room was. The one I thought that, no, just because I fought it. Bita grabbed at her head, chest and moaned. Answer, Kokua Game of Anno, Mada Soto. Daka or ever. So can you do my Jisama or Hitewa Shinai? I put my hand over Bito on Bito's as she tried to hold back the pain deep inside her chest. I've already told Burn Castle. 
the two day period of the 1986 Rave Conference was all I need to deny the illusion of the witch. お前は前回全ゲームの開始時にじいさまが死んでることを赤で宣言したがしかしゲーム開始以前のじいさまの生死については言及していないつまり今この場にじいさまが存在していても何の矛盾もないってわけだ yeah. My hand touching her let off a faint blue light, which seeped into her chest. That light tenderly wrapped itself around the splinters in Beta's chest. So she Konobani すなわち、1986年10月4日以前の島の人数については、だから、ここにベアトリーチェが存在しても、何もおかしいことはない。Beto's expression softened slightly. My blue light slowly began to melt to red splinters that denied the illusion of the witch. Beto still wore the same sad expression, but she lifted her face and looked me straight in the eye. Though she was silent, her eyes told me that her pain had subsided. The feelings that showed in her eyes were gratitude for taking the pain away, and appreciation, or was it surprise, for leaving even a tiny bit of leeway for witches to exist. Unable to look directly at those pure eyes of hers, I reflexively averted my gaze. <笑>誤解すんなよ。魔女の存在を認めたり、あるいは屈したつもりもねえ。俺はお前とのゲームに勝つために、その部分だけに徹して、ストイックに戦いたいってわけだぜ。ゲーム版の外でまで嫌がら
何をしようとしていたのかもな。Very soon this game will also reach October 4th, 1986. The fifth game will finally begin, and this time I'll reach the end. The end of that journey. Satsujin Gatoka, Torik Gatoka. So you Uabe Dakajanai. Oh, my God. Ogono Major Beatrice. Nani Okanga and Nano Tameni Sostanoka. You're finally thinking of motive, bad word. Why? Nani on Ozonde Tanoka. Sorry. That's right. I already know the, how I can reach the end of that journey. It's been made clear to me since the very beginning. So, the woman of Shinzo in Tadoritsk. Itaminanka Kanji Sasanai. An Shinshiro. Ano Majo do Mono Omochaninado. Mo Korejo Sasanai Karada. Peter looked up at me again and gave a small nod. That's right. The position of Game Master might have been snatched up by Rama Delta. However, as long as I continue this contest with the intent of fighting against Beto, our fight will continue no matter who controls the game board. Very soon, the curtain will rise on our game. おやかたさまの秘密を隠さねばならぬ。はい。心得ております。同じ手がもう一度通じる鍵門だな。奥様も同じご懸念を持たれている。そのため、今年は書斎から一切お出にならない方向に行くことになった。つまり、ずっと書
すでになくなっている。おお。そんなバカな。まあまあ。例えの話や。武田信玄はその死を三年の間秘密にするよう遺言したっちゅう有名な故事があるやろ知らんかそんな話もあったかしら日本史はよくわかんないわ当時武田は織田や徳川との戦の真っ最中だったそこで信玄が死んだなんて話になったら戦況に悪影響が出るやろそやから自分の死を三年隠すように遺言したんや秀吉かてそうやで主君織田信長の死を敵方に知られんように徹底的に情報規制を行い素早く毛利と和解して中国大返しを行い明智を打ったんやないか一方の柴田勝家はそこで失敗したんや敵の上杉に信長の死を知られ思わぬ反撃を受けて足止めを食らいその後の秀吉との後継者争いで大きく遅れを取ることになったんや秀吉は自分の死がわしは去年の親族会議からずっと違和感を持っていたあれは私やルドルフが遺産の話をしてたのを廊下のお父様に聞かれてしまってそれでそこやナチスさんや使用人たちはどこそこにお父さんがいた不機嫌そうだったと口を揃えたなわしら親族は誰一人お父さんを見てないやろもしあなたの想像が本当ならどういうこと兄さんが遺産の独り占めを狙ってるということもちろん死んだことを隠すなんてかなり危険なこと果たして遺産を独り占めするためだけにそれだけのことをクラウスさんがやってのけるのかわしも確信は持てんだが可能性はある確かに兄さんは昔から強欲よ兄弟全員でと受け取ったものを着服するなんてよくあることだった、うん、クラウスさんはわしら兄弟の中では一番裕福なはずやそんなクラウスさんがお父さんの死を隠すなんて危険を冒してまで遺産の独り占めを目論むとはわしにはちょいと信じられんのだがなだがそう疑いたくなるくらい去年の親族会議はおかしかったんやで<笑> Suspicions are aware Even the others were painfully aware of how reckless it would be to try and see Kenzo when he was in a bad mood. So during last year's family conference, once they heard about Kenzo getting into a terrible mood, they never made an attempt to contact with him. That was why, to this very day, they hadn't found a suspicion that Kenzo had never appeared. ごまなくせにおかしなところで昇進な人よそんな一世一代の大爆中を本当にするかしら。うん。いずれにせよ、今年の会議ではきっちりお父さんのご尊顔を拝謁した方がええやろな。うん。いや、スペシャル。非常に
<笑>そりゃ投資家は超えてるから投資家なんだぜ実は金欠だなんてことになったら誰も見向きもしねえ信用第一の世界なのね Kyrie <laughs> smiled thin away Rudolph was taken aback by that smile. He figured that this his baddest plan, which involved wasting money to get him out of his current mess by borrowing from the affluent Klaus, would all come to nothing now that they knew Klaus himself was in financial trouble. Klaus's trouble. <laughs> Rudolph felt a shiver go up his spine at Curie's cold smile. At times, Curie was able to throw away all compassion and think in an extremely ruthless manner. Whenever he saw that Rudolph do, he never liked the FRS's his enemy. Rudolph stopped talking, folded his arms, and loaded his gaze. He still felt some of the terror he experienced thanks to Klaus's violence when they were young. Now that same Klaus was one he needed to frighten. Rudolph would also be fighting against his childhood trauma. So, to give her husband a little push, Kyrie smiled reassuringly, and perhaps coldly. <laughs> クラウスさんが大きな損失を出しているといっても、私たちの急場をしのぐための <laughs> そうだったのね。私の京都の友人たちにそういうのを洗うのが上手な人たちがいるな。あまり世話になりたくない連中なんだけど、一度会ってもらっても。領収書は切れないけど、きっと投資に見合うだけのものを調べ上げてくれる。
うまくいけばそれ以上も引っ張れるかもしれないお前の借金それでチャラだそれはいつまでにせしめられるのもちろん年度内だ俺も助かる金木も助かるそしてローザも助かるってわけだ散歩を丸く終わる姉さんが話に乗るくらいには賞賛があるのね話を聞く気になったかちょいと急だが次の日曜日の19時銀座のお前のお気に入りの喫茶店で会おう俺と姉貴の予定が僕に変わる問題ないか2億捻出できる話なら聞かないわけにはいかないわでは次の日曜日の午後7時にレオポルドでマリアちゃんによろしくね連れてきてもいいんだぜうんあの子の前でお金の話はやめてうっ She said that we see we're done with a clunk, a little violent way. Apparently, either Ava or Rudolph had gotten a hold of one of Cross's weak points. They would probably friend him with that at the next family conference and force him to pay up. Even before hearing the details, she knew full well that it would be nothing good. But even so, this might be her once in a lifetime chance to pay back her large debts. Rosa took a notebook out of her handbag and started to mark the day she'll be meeting with Rudolph and Ava. Then she frowned and smacked herself hard on the forehead. Because when there was DZL with Maria, something she had planned to do with her daughter. <sighs> Maria was in her room, pointing around excitedly with Sakatoru and the others. That was because she was going to go to that recently built amusement park, De Del Delsney Land. <laughs> De ah, yes, my favorite world, Delsney Land. <laughs> The following Sunday. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's just such a funny way to fucking spell it. Uh, you guys want to go to Dell's Del name world? <laughs> Looking at the clock, was I saw that it was just past nine at night. Maria was breaking the lights out wool. After covering her face and agonizing for a while, Rosa stood up and stomped over to Maria's room. <sighs> the room probably be a mess as well. At least tonight, that was convenient. As she stood outside the door to Maria's room, listening to the happy laughter seeping through, Rosa's face twisted in anguish once again, and she looked at the floor. Then, when she raised her head again, her brow was furrowed, and her face had become an angry expression of anger. <sighs> The weather wasn't that great. According to the weekend forecast, a certain tropical cyclone would likely grow onto a launch typhoon. If unhappy if premonitions tend to be right, this year's tsunami conference will probably take place in absolute horrible weather. No, I wish a typhoon watch enough to stop all boat travel and see Wilkin Jima away forever. If that happened, I'd be able to hide Kinzo's death as long as I wanted. Natsuri went out of a deep sigh. Just doing that made her a headache for a while. As the day of the family conference approached, the intensity of her headache just kept on increasing. Eh, maybe this does explain why she has uh, such a large headache. You know, covering up the fact that, you know, the head of the mansion is, you know, head of the family's dead. Fact that her husband's kind of an idiot. Just, just a lot of fucking things. <laughs> At that time, the phone rang. Oh boy. That's when he turned the TV off and picked up the receiver. Hi. Oh boy. External one. ですが名前をお名乗りになられませんか名乗らないはい先方は話せば分かるとは申しておりますがなおいかがしますかいたずらかもしれませんどんな相手です
young man. That's why you didn't have a clue who that might be. In the first place, there was no one amongst her, her acquaintances who would do something as weird as refusing to say her name. And on top of that, a young man? As a wife, she must avoid any contact that might be considered suspicious of anyone other than her husband, much less a young man. As soon as she fought this, the phone call suddenly seemed like something dirty. But despite that, she also wanted to know what they wanted to tell her. Could it be some kind of trouble related to Cross's business? What if there was some particular reason they needed to talk to Cross's wife instead of Cross the right way? No matter what it is, it's my duty as a wife to listen and report to Klaus. If it's some bizarre threat, I'll just have to firmly refuse and inform Klaus that I received such a phone call. If it's something offensive, I just have to tell Kenji to never send me anonymous calls again. As Natsuki fought this, just as Genji was suggesting that he hang up on the man as though that's what she'd naturally choose, she told him to connect her to this person. She then set the receiver down. After a short while, the phone rang again. This wasn't the internal line. It was the external phone line, which Genji had redirected to her. Yes. So, it should already have been connected directly with the mysterious man. However, the other pers the person on the other end then respond. Not liking this at all, Natsuri spoke one more time, sounding displeased. She heard something like... That sounded like a sigh. She gulped reflexively. That she remained silent for a little longer, the man finally answered. That's bad war. That was the first time the man had spoken. It's bad war. Th th yeah. <laughs> The voice suddenly did sound like a young man's. I, I was especially bad word since, you know, young man. But maybe there's bias, but that's bad word. But it's hard to remember much about someone just by their voice over the phone. It sounded like a young man, but it might actually be a middle school age boy. Or a man in his prime would still have a youngish voice. No, wait. It might be too soon to be sure this is even a male. However, one thing was certain. That's where he could think of no one who would speak to her in an overly familiar manner like this. あなたは誰ですかそして私に何の用ですかそれが言えないなら興味はありません切りますよ俺の望みはあんたに思い出してもらうことだ何を思い出せというのですかあなたなど知りませんし思い出すような心当たりもありません<笑> What? What? That unsettling word thrust itself mercilessly into the depths of Natsuki's heart and started churning it about. In her entire life, Natsuki had never been told something so unsettling. In her bewilderment, Natsuki felt her heart beat so wildly that it felt like it would explode.
19年前の。That's who his mind went for. <laughs> And from beyond the wind howling outside the window, she most certainly heard the war of the sea from that day. Breathing so hard, her shoulders heaved, not so he swam the receiver down and hung up. Then she hit the phone violently, knocking the receiver off so that no more calls would come through it. I could hear the roar of the sea. The voice I hear from beyond the h a l l i n g wind is certainly. Uh, even if I cover my ears, even if I cover my ears, the headache won't completely pale, not so he kept shivering as though cold. I've. Okay. <laughs> I. Dude. Dude. <laughs> oh. I've played this game for so fucking long. I've played this game for little hours upon. At least a hundred hours. At least nine. No, a hundred hours. I am so sure that is Bad Wars VA. I am so fucking sure. And if that's Bad Wars. And we know for a fact that Rudolph is dead. <laughs> Oh, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, fuck. That really. I, I think my body's going to shock. <laughs> Shut up, you two. <laughs> of course, it's always damn soy sauce and sake. m a m a d e l took w i n d unpleasantly as though sizing Burn Castle up. She was probably trying to tease Burn for making that demand. Of course, this fishy telephone call. 
happened before October 4th, 1986. This is still before the start gate time of the game. So there's basically no need to question whether it's true or false. Yeah. <laughs> After suddenly being quonked out ahead, Lamba Delta was bewildered. But perhaps this incomprehensible exchange was funny to her, because she went back to giggling. ベアトリッチ。やはり恐ろしいことある。ネルンダは何か行動ある。ないわ。あんたの復唱要求に答えないな。それ。Well then. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the game finally begins, ladies and gentlemen. Nineteen years ago. Huh? Nineteen years. First day. Furudo Erika. Hmm. <sighs> and I think this is a good stopping point. Now I'm trying to think. How? It could be fucking with me. It could be fucking with me. I really hope it's fucking with me. <laughs> but. Dude, no. Uh, uh, how old is Battler? <laughs> he's, he's not a teenager. He would probably be 19, most likely. No. No. <laughs> no. No. But why use Battler's V8? <laughs> but why use him? <laughs> uh, they're... Oh. But why use bad that that is a hundred percent battle wars VA. I I I could maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the music fuck with me, but like that what really clued me in that was bad word was the little like inhale. Like the little ellipses before the call. Like when I heard that inhale, I thought immediately, oh, bad word. <laughs> but if it's bad word, and we know, we we know, he doesn't. <laughs> his mother isn't his real mother. Oh, oh this is something to think about. <laughs> oh shit! Oh shit, man. Maybe it's fake. Ah. It works way too well. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm just um reeling back from the possible incest reveal. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Fuck. Oh 
Maybe it's not that. Maybe maybe it isn't that. I don't maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't I don't fucking know, man. Oh fuck. That could be a fake scene. I don't I don't know. Oh, but everything in my head, both my head and my heart is is telling me that they ain't a fake scene, Boyd. That ain't a fake scene at all. Cause why would Natsu make something like make some makes make up something like that for no reason? A young man calling, telling her about 19 years ago and the crime. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, fuck. <laughs> fuck, where do we go from here, man? Oh my god. Anyway, um... Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this episode, hit that subscribe button. If you liked it, hit the like button. Tell me something for down comments below. Sorry, Discord server hanging out in my Twitter check screen below. And, uh, yeah, this has been Void Waco, guys. I'll, I'll, um, I'll see you guys next time. See ya.